So we're a month out, four weeks out to the uh, early access release of WolfQuest Anniversary Edition for PC and Mac. And um, I know a lot of people are getting excited about that. And uh, we know that a lot of people have a burning question. Will the game run on my computer? So we're going to look at that today. So I'm running the game here um, on fantastic quality setting, graphics quality. And this is really how we designed the game to look. And to run this on Fantastic, I'm using Windows with uh, an NVIDIA GTX 1060 graphics card. So that's considered a mid-range graphics card. It's three years old. It was a mid-range card even when it came out. And it's a pretty common GPU for gamers. But we know that many, many, maybe most of our players don't have a 1060, much less anything more powerful than that. And so that's what we've set up the graphics quality settings for is uh, so you can tailor it to your computer. So if we open that up here in the graphics quality, we've got a bunch of options here. So we're still refining these choices, tweaking and testing to see which options really have the, the best, make, make the biggest difference on different hardware. And so, th so these change these different settings here. So then you can change it and then you can then do a little more customization here. Like, well, I don't need the tree just to be quite so far. Or I really would like a little more grass density. So you can customize it then to get just the right balance of visual quality and performance, how, how fast it runs on your computer. Um, so the vegetation is one of the big things that does affect how the game runs as well as of course how it looks. You wouldn't think that a game that's really just grass and trees would be that demanding graphically. But in fact, in 3D game graphics, those are actually some of the most demanding things you can draw. Because if you have a building here, um, it might have a lot of polygons and a lot of detail, but it's just this big solid mesh that the game can draw pretty quickly, quite quickly generally, um, and be done with. But with trees and grass, you have a lot of overlapping objects. And not only are they overlapping, but they have a lot of um, transparency because these meshes are not, you know, they're not polygons for each little needle and leaf on the tree. Um, they are actually um, have a lot of, of um, transparent parts. So, you know, to represent what the tree looks like. So I've set up one of these trees to show that. Let's take a closer look here. I've turned off the transparency for one of these trees. So you can see um, that the textures are very, very blocky. And then they use transparency to um, carve out the actual branch and needle and leaf shape. So with all this transparency in these trees, and you look through, you know, you're looking through dozens of trees, that's a lot of work for the graphics card to draw because it has to calculate what's transparent, what's opaque, um, and in some cases what's translucent on every pixel of every branch of every tree. And that's a lot of layers and a lot of calculations. And grass is the same way. It has a lot of transparency. Those are just big kind of flat planes, but because of the transparency, you get those individual blades of grass. So it's kind of counterintuitive, but a simple uh, nature scene like this is actually one of the most demanding things um, that you can draw on a computer in a real-time game. Further complicating matters, of course, is that we have these beautiful long views across the Lamar Valley. So, you know, we're looking actually 23 kilometers is what the draw distance here is set at. And, um, you know, we can reduce that some, and uh, we will, we do, on the lower quality settings. But we didn't design the Lamar Valley and Amethyst Mountain to be ideal environments for um, efficient 3D graphics rendering. We just have to live with them. Further, further complicating things is that we have this dynamic day-night cycle which is terrific for the, the immersion that it gives you as a player in the game. So the sun is always moving. You can see the shadows always moving here. Yeah, just inching along the ground. And so because of that, we can't use some of the techniques that we used in the old game um, for where, we, where we bake in the shadows and kind of burn them into the terrain so they're just fixed there. And that's really great to improve performance but it means you can't have a dynamic day-night cycle, uh, which is something we really felt was important for this new game. So WolfQuest presents some, some particular challenges to, to a graphics card that's trying to render this whole thing at 30 or 60 frames per second. So what does that mean for you? That's the important question here. Um, again, we get back to the graphics card and how powerful it is at rendering this stuff. So, so let's try to get an idea of the uh, range of uh, power and capability of graphics cards today. 
So this is a great site, Passmark Software. It has a site, videocardbenchmark.net. We'll put this link in the description below. And they benchmark, um, kind of analyze or collect, collect analyses of you know, hundreds or thousands of uh, graphics cards out there. And here's a really helpful little bar chart of uh, common video cards that are uh, out in use today. So it starts with the most powerful, actually it doesn't even include um, the most powerful cards, which are the newer version of um, NVIDIA and, and, and Radeon cards. Um, this starts at the last generation. So there's a whole level above this that it's not even showing, just to put this in context. So this starts with the, uh, the GeForce 1080 Ti, powerful card of the, this last generation from a couple years ago, which has a score of 14,000. That's a very expensive car. We don't care about that. We're gonna go down here. So as I said, kind of our base target is uh, 1060. So that's right here. So that gets a score of 9,000 points. This the score is just for comparison purposes. So bigger is better, about 9,000 points for the one that, uh, that we're using um, in our development. Also, we also use the Radeon uh, RX 580, which is slightly below that, but we find very comparable performance. That's a really good card too. Um, so again, these are kind of considered mid-range cards but we know that for our players, um, that's less probably common than a lot of older cards or even um, no dedicated graphics card at all. So as we look at these cards here, so you go back to previous generations of graphics cards, so the 1060 is, or the 20 is the newest one, it's not even listed here, the 10, 1000 level, the 1060 is the previous generation from 2016, I think. And then you go to older ones, but the way the naming system works, the bigger the number within that, the better. So anyways, you can see the power de de declines, but if you go to a, a, one of the better ones from the last generation, the 960, so it's got a score of about almost 6,000. That's a little worse than a lower card from the current generation. That's the 1050 Ti. But naturally the power decreases as you go down. And so um, we've seen that testing it on a, uh, a very common card out there now is uh, from the um, the 900 series, the GeForce. Um, it's the 960, but it's actually it's not this 960 because a lot of people have laptops. So it's the 960M for mobile, which basically means it's clocked way down, so it doesn't overheat your laptop. And sadly, it's clocked way down. <laughs> the 960M is a score 2300. And that's less than half as powerful as the full power 960. And that might be underestimating it a bit. So especially on laptops, there are a lot of um, medium or, or worse power cards out there, even though they're dedicated graphics cards. So on that 960M, we've seen that you can run the game on good quality, which means it's got less grass and, um, and you can't... Uh, hit 60 frames per second it's 30 30 to 40 generally so we've got we set up these these uh, graphics quality settings to basically scale down as you go down from the kind of our target card of the 1060 down to older weaker cards where things get uh, tougher is when you get down uh, to the level where you don't have a dedicated graphics card you just have the built-in Intel integrated graphics because you can see the, the very best one listed here so that's that'd be on a newer um, Intel motherboard only gets a 1000 rating. So it's one ninth as powerful as the 1060 card that we use. And then as you go back farther, so like uh, there are still people we know using the Intel 4000, um, which is seven, eight years old now, and it was not that great when it came out. <laughs> so that's less than half as powerful as even one of the better Intel integrated cards. So for so a lot of games nowadays, especially ones that are out, kind of out in nature, um, you know, these dinosaur games like the Isle or Saurian or such, they don't even support the Intel integrated cards. They require a, a decent uh, graphics card going back to like a, a GTX 660 or something like that one, a four, which gets a 4000 rating. That's a pretty common low end um, minimum requirement for the games you've looked at on Steam that are kind of similar in terms of the environments they're, they're depicting. Um, but we know that a lot of our players don't have a computer with a dedicated graphics card. And so um, we really want to make sure that they can play the game and, uh, and not be left out. So we have set up this basic option for the sky and vegetation. Um, the vegetation is the big thing. The sky also has got some really nice weather and cloud effects, but there is a, a simpler uh, version of the of that uh, weather plugin that we can use. So if you switch down to one of the, let's just go to fastest. 
So that switches us over to the basic sky and vegetation mode and everything here is just cranked down to the minimum. So we're still working on this basic mode. We're actually setting up an alternate version of all the trees and grass, matching the location of the trees in the main version, but just much lower quality. So here's what that looks like currently. This is with all the grass turned off to really maximize the speed. Um, I've tested this on um, a computer with an Intel, that Iris um, Pro 60, uh, 620, I think it was. And I can get 35 frames per second on average. Obviously it does not look nearly as nice as it does with the higher quality, um, but the gameplay is identical. If this is purely changing the graphics. There is a bit of a you know downside to even offering this. I mean, obviously the upside is that more people can play it. The downside is that you know you post your screenshots and people are like, well, that game doesn't look that great. It looks worse than the old game. So that's a trade-off. But we we know that a lot of people don't uh, have you know a, a nice gaming computer, and we do want them to be able to play it. Um, how well this scales down to even weaker ones, like you could see there that the um, even among Intel integrated graphics. There's quite a range there. We haven't got a hold of an Intel 4000 to test yet. Um, but one of the things you can do here in the game settings is change your display resolution. So your monitor probably is running at the full HD 1920 by 1080 resolution, but an easy way to um, boost your performance is to switch it to take it down a step because that just means that the game is pushing out fewer pixels total. It's not 1900 by a thousand pixels, whatever that is, 1.9 million. So it's fewer pixels, so the computer has to do less work to draw them. So that's one way to goose out a little more performance out of whatever uh, hardware you have. So the short answer here is, you know, get the best uh, gaming computer you can to run the game. And uh, this, again, this website is really helpful to um, give you a good overview of that. But it will, you are going to be able to scale down the quality to uh, match your computer unless it just is getting pretty old. There's another caveat I have to make about Mac computers. Um, you know, I've been using Macs for 25 years. We developed the original game entirely on Macs. Done a lot of this development on Macs as well. But unfortunately, Macs, I mean, they've never been, you know, great for gaming. And as the graphics in Wolf Quest Anniversary Edition, you know, really step up from the old game, the Macs just have a hard time with it. I'm really, really sorry to say. And uh, uh, it's nothing we can do anything about, um, but, I've actually put the same, um, that Radeon 580 card on a Mac and on Windows, and it's pretty astounding and disappointing how much worse the same graphics card performs on a Mac. So I love Macs, but they're just not equivalent in any way to, to Windows computers for games. So that's a not very short uh, summary of the situation with WolfQuest Anniversary Edition, and um, computers and graphics cards and I hope this has been helpful there's lots of resources out there on the internet just on choosing a good gaming computer in general if you're actually lucky enough to be in the market for one but we are doing our very best and we're continuing to work on ways to optimize the game to get uh, better graphics on lower hardware every possible way we can think of and we do hope to keep doing this as well after the uh, initial release on early access as well so we can just keep improving the game so everybody can have as uh, great an experience as possible playing it. Mm -hmm.